Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Stuff Sketched with Greg Schiegel. I am Greg Schiegel, and on today's episode, I am drawing a kangarunicorn. What is a kangarunicorn? It's a kangaroo with a unicorn horn. Yeah, that's right. Full innovation, inventing unicorn-type creatures. This is for something I'm working on, uh, where I'm doing a series of drawings of non-horse unicorn creatures. Uh, and this is one of those. Why a kangaroo? Uh, why not? Kangaroos are... Well, I'll talk about kangaroos a bit in, in a minute. Um, what you're seeing here is me, uh, well, obviously drawing. Um, <clears throat> trying to sort out how to draw a kangaroo's head. Um, you will see very shortly that I was not happy with this particular drawing. Uh, as I will remove it. So don't, don't get comfortable with what you're seeing right here. Um... Anyway, why kangaroos? Uh, you may not be watching it on the day it's going up, but it is going up on February 29th, which is leap day of a leap year calendar year. There it goes. Kangaroo's gone. Uh, or kangaroonicorn is gone. Of a leap, deer, a leap year, leap day. Yeah. So I wanted to draw an animal that leaps, a jumping animal. Um, so pretty much the options were rabbit, frog, kangaroo I suppose a leaping lizard as the expression goes uh, and I went for kangaroo because uh, they're they're cool looking and then uh, I learned as I did a little kangaroo research looking up kangaroo reference and particularly videos online uh, kangaroos are wild man they are that is a fascinating animal I was watching kangaroo fights on YouTube like the way they fight each other Oof. They don't mess around. Uh, what's happening here is I'm adjusting the construction elements because I was feeling like the legs, the back legs, were not quite um, lining up with the, the the front legs, like in terms of the hip axis, the axis of the hips to the axis of the shoulders. I wanted those to be as parallel as possible, but also look like it's leaping. So it's a tricky bit of business, um, and you'll see me fiddle with that quite a bit. As as you've heard me say in these videos in the past, if you've watched videos in the past, uh, I spend a lot of time on the underdrawing, the construction drawing, the, the sorting out the mechanics, uh, mixing my ingredients, measuring and mixing my ingredients before I bake or frost uh, the ingredients of this, of the cake that is a drawing. Um, and, and some of it, for an animal like a kangaroo, which... You know, I could draw a cartoon kangaroo, or I could try and match what a kangaroo actually looks like, but the idea is to make something look like a kangaroo. Uh, it takes a little work in, in looking at an image of a kangaroo. Now, right now, I'm messing with potential ways of drawing the kangaroo horn. For all these unique unicorns, aka unique corns, I'm trying to make a distinctive horn as, in as much as I can. I mean, I might run out of horn designs before I run out of animals. Uh, so for this kangaroo horn, I'm doing a ringed horn. Ringed horn. Did that sound right? It sounded weird in my ears, which is why I said it twice. Uh, kangaroo hands are fascinating. Uh, they got... It's, it's... I mean, they're like giant... Rodent... Dinosaur... What are... They're, they're crazy, but they have like... Shoulders and, and pecs like a human... I'm telling you, go look for some of these these kangaroo fighting videos. They, they, they're huge, and they are very impressive, kangaroo. When when most of what you know of kangaroos, or rather most of what I know of kangaroos, is from cartoons and stuff, uh, to see actual kangaroos and the way they actually function. Like, they're not boxing the way they do in, in old cartoons, but they're not too far off. Um, so this series of drawings... So now you can see I'm, I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with the the figure itself. And now I'm sort of blocking in some background elements before I start uh, inking. Which even that isn't, isn't quite ready to go. But it will be soon enough. Um, speaking of kangaroos in, in, uh, in popular culture, uh, there was a video game that when I was a kid called Kangaroo. Yeah, so now I'm doing a second pass on the actual kangaroo uh, figure. 
or the kangaroo unicorn because I, I still wasn't happy with the the face um there's a sort of there's a certain rabbit quality to a kangaroo's head there's a certain deer quality to a kangaroo's head um and it's it's i think here's where i sorted out that it's like it's that the nose slopes down it doesn't it doesn't curve up the way say a deer or a bambi drawn deer would work it's closer to to this thing that i'm sorting out here uh, which is to say the construction game on these things never ends. I'm always drawing and redrawing and tweaking and finding the way to cartoon something to make it look the way I want it to look, etc. So anyway, I was, I was talking about a video game. There was a video game in the in the 1980s, in the arcade cabinet era of video games, uh, called Kangaroo. And uh, I would play this video game, and I will tell you right now, uh, the opening little set up a cartoon for this thing it's very emotional uh it was it was like a baby kangaroo was separated from its or a joey that's what a baby kangaroo is called was separated from its mama kangaroo or maybe the baby i think you're controlling the mother kangaroo and you have to save your baby or it's the other way around you're the baby and you have to get to your mom who's far away it was basically a a donkey kong style game but with a kangaroo that would punch because that was the that's the bit kangaroos punch and man the little opening cartoon I, I, I have vivid memories of it really really I really found it uh, heavy as they would say in Back to the Future heavy man heavy uh, so anyway there's a there's a kangaroo for you another famous kangaroo is Kangaroo Jack from a movie called Kangaroo Jack I've never seen that movie I've heard it was... It's I, I hear it's an interesting one in that it was supposed to be one thing and then it became something else. But I've never seen it. Uh, these videos are now with YouTube's new rulings. Uh, a, a video for kids. So there's no comment section. So I can't say things like leave a comment if you've seen Kangaroo Jack. Sorry. Uh, but I'm doing these drawings. I don't know if I said this. I don't think I have. I'm doing these this series of drawings. The intent being to at some point release them as a collection for a coloring book. So you will see as I ink this thing, I'm inking it and approaching it with uh, coloring book aesthetics in mind, which is to say spaces for color to happen and open you know, open spaces, less, less uh, finicky line work, less um, hatching, cross hatching, that kind of a thing. Uh, ideally, I'll do about 25 to 30 of these and put these in a book a drawing per page uh, so you can follow me on various social media platforms it's basically my name uh, and there's links in the in the description below of Twitter Facebook and I do a monthly newsletter that you can sign up for where on the first of each month I tell you what's going on so when the unique corn coloring book is out in the world those will be the places that'll that the news will break and then I'll probably mention it in future videos um, I might even have more videos of me drawing unique corns that aren't kangaroos anything's possible uh, so yeah so here I, you know, I figured out how to draw the kangaroo hands in a way that worked for me that sort of resembled what a kangaroo's hand looks like but also fit the sort of cartoon drawing I'm trying to accomplish. Really, it's just, it's, it's, this is, this is frosting the cake. <clears throat> uh, this video is being presented at four times speed. So everything that's happening here is happening four times faster than it did when I actually drew it. The drawing itself took something like 50 some minutes, 53, 54 minutes, something like that. I feel like I'm talking very fast than others. The silence feels more dramatic than if I was speaking more slowly. The hind legs of a kangaroo, I couldn't quite figure out how they work in terms of... I mean, obviously, there's like a thigh, a shin, and the foot, and the foot is very long. But in different images, it, the toes of the back legs seem pretty wild, like they got long... 
uh, I don't know if talons or nails or claws. Claws, I guess, is the word. So I'm opting to simplify it and just make it like giant rabbit's feet. Apologies to the kangaroo purists out there for not nailing it in terms of the exact anatomy of a kangaroo. Uh, my friends in Australia, apologies. I, I mean it not as any disrespect to these wild, very cool looking animals. They are really cool looking. Again, it's something between, it's like, there's a rabbit element to it, there's a kang, there's a there's a dinosaur element to it, there's a deer element to it. And then when they start, when they really start moving, again, I've been watching these videos, when they're like hopping at a speed, it's so cool. Yeah, so now I'm adding some shadows, but I'm, I'm not, like, there's a temptation to, like, darken in the back limbs considerably, but the intent is for this to be a coloring book, so I don't want to, you know, keep in the, the, the back shading minimal, just create some depth, but not overshoot the mark, as it were. Now I can bring the background back and start drawing that. At this point, it's all pretty, you know, just sort of riffing and drawing plant life and, again, things to color. Uh, and I'm trying to close shapes up and avoid too many weird tangents. Like there, I, I, the, I realize that I need to put my horizon lines in before I start putting the plant life in so that things line up or don't line up accordingly. Looking at the terrain for kangaroos, there's a lot of open space, which isn't the most fun for coloring. So, again, a little bit of liberties in terms of background elements. What I should have done is I should have flown to Australia, uh, check things out, and then it could have been a, a, a tax write-off, like a business expense. Like, oh, I went to Australia for research because I was drawing a kangaroo unicorn, and I needed to get a sense of the environment that actual kangaroo unicorns live in. And then the IRS could say, there's no such thing as a kangaroo unicorn, uh, and then audit me. Oh, God, can you imagine? Terrible. And now I'm just drawing the sun or the moon. You know, whoever's coloring it can decide what that is in the background. In my mind, it's the sun. Uh, the moon I would have drawn craters on. Uh, now this process here is I'm drawing the, the shadow for the, kang the kangaroo unicorn. I can tell you now, in hindsight, so I do it and then I redo it. Uh, I'm not happy with where the shadow is placed in this drawing. I think it's too high, too close to the kangaroo unicorn's feet. So it does not look like the kangaroo unicorn is jumping as high as I would like it to. So I will uh, be going into this drawing and uh, adjusting that, changing the, the position of that shadow. One of the advantages of working digitally is it, it'll be much easier to go in and make that change. But there you go, kangaroo unicorn. That's about all the stuff I have left to say. I'll see you next time. Let's